Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, and in this video I'm going to show you the setup, wiring, and installation of this all-in-one Republic of Gamers cooler. I'm going to show you how to mount it on the top of your case and on the side, and how to swap out the fans if you want to, including software settings and more. And I'm going to show you how to do this with an Intel build with some clues on things of interest that you need to know along the way, including the wiring and the logic of all the things included in the box. I'll leave timestamps down below so you can jump to the relevant points in the video as well as links to related content and more. You'll see when we start to unbox it that the thing is contained in two separate boxes with these fans being in the little ones. Now I'm not going to be using these fans at the final stage of this build but I am going to show you how to install them and set them up and wire them and what to do if you're using them in your build. They're very nice fans that clip together with little magnets and you can see that you can only attach them one way. They snap together nicely there with the connectors on either end and you need to line up those metal contacts in order to do that. These are then snapped together and the power will pass between them as well as the RGB lighting. So the wiring is particularly easy. I'll get to that in a second. The cooler itself also comes with pre-applied thermal paste on the pump, so on the copper plate. And that's worth noting because I'm also going to be using something else a little later on in the video. And it has protective covers on the radiator, which you'll need to remove beforehand. So these plastic caps here, you can see with the ROG logo on them, you'll need to make sure you take those off before you install the fans or try and install this into your system. So it's nice to have these little extras included. You don't often see this with all-in-one coolers. So nice that the fins and other bits will be protected in there and kept in a good state, ready for your build. As with other all-in-one coolers, this is already pre-filled with coolant, so you don't need to worry about filling it up or topping it up. There's no issues there. It's all self-contained within there, and you'll hear it slosh about if you shake it around a bit. Then you'll see that the top of the pump, so where the display sits, is quite a chunky affair, so you will need a good case in order to take this and account for that in your build. But in most cases it should be fine. The display pops off and this is an important part of the installation process and you'll see that when it comes off there's some contacts on the inside so you get an idea of which way round this goes over. There's also a gap at the bottom of it which sits around the tube so you can only install it one way. So you can see a look at that. It has a built-in fan into it as well as the pump which makes it a very nice setup indeed with potential cooling for the surroundings of the CPU as well as the CPU itself. There's also some pre-applied thermal paste on the copper plate, which is more than good enough for cooling purposes. So you don't need to worry about applying a thermal paste. Although if you want to get some extra for reapplying in future, that is an option, obviously. And that is the setup. That's everything included in the box laid out there with the long radiator screws, the small ones for installing it and the case and other things. So the cabling's pretty interesting. You'll see these cables included in the box. We've got those metal pin contacts on the left hand side, then a 5 volt RGB header and a fan power connector. So you can see this little connector snaps onto one end of the fans. You can only actually install it one way because there's a little plastic notch on it which you need to make sure you line up so you can see as I turn it around how that sits into the end of the fans. And then the other end would plug directly into your motherboard for RGB and fan power. So you can see this motherboard, for example, and set up how it will plug in there. I'd recommend plugging the fans into the CPU fan header, which you can see up here. That way your BIOS will recognize those fans and spin them up when the CPU gets a bit hot. And then the other connector goes into the 5 volt RGB header, which has three pins on it. Then you have this back plate, which we're going to need to use to install on the back of your Intel motherboard to get it ready to receive the cooler once everything's installed. You can see that it can be adjusted to fit. In this build, I'm using a Z890 motherboard, which is an LGA 1851 socket motherboard. But you can also use it with an LGA 1700 socket motherboard if you've got an older one, perfectly fine. So make sure you've got your CPU installed, obviously, and go through that process of lifting the latch up, installing the CPU down into the socket gently, and then putting the latch back down and reseating the lever into place to secure your CPU. And then you want to go about putting this back plate on. 
So this back plate basically goes through those four holes in the four corners. Depending on your motherboard socket, you might need to adjust where it sits so you could see that you can move out each of the pins into different positions depending on which socket of motherboard you're using. So you might have to just move those in and out. Make sure they push through to the other side and then you put these little plastic washers down over the edges that then grip onto it. I'd recommend doing that beforehand because as you'll see, if we take this LGA 1700 socket motherboard and install it into a case without doing that, it becomes a little bit trickier. Some cases you can access the back of it and you can put the back plate in place just fine. In other instances, you might find it presses up against the plastic. So in this Fantex build, for example, I actually found it was very difficult to install this bracket because of the design of the case. Otherwise, the logic is pretty much the same and it's a straightforward enough installation, whatever you're doing. Now, for the installing of the radiator in the top of the case, if that's something you want to do, obviously just seating that into there and then using the little screws and washers to hold it in place. If you don't have a removable radiator tray, you can see how that lines up at the top and then you just screw those in. You do have to make a choice about how the tubes sit in the build depending on whether you're going to be running additional fans, so a rear fan, for example, and setting that up. But otherwise, the mounting is fairly straightforward. You can see it was a bit tight in this case, but it is possible to get it in there. Once that's done, you remove the plastic cover, and then you just need to seat the cooler down over the standoffs that we just put in place with that back plate. So you can see this bracketing on the cooler is set up for Intel. So you can just immediately install that. Take off the display first of all, because you'll need to be able to access the various different screws to secure it down. And then you're going to see that over the top of the CPU, lining up the four corners with the standoffs coming through at the rear, and then we have to secure it and make sure it's secured down that way. So obviously just setting it down there. Take care not to move it around too much. You don't want to rub the thermal paste off and damage that. So seat it down, then secure it. I recommend going from corner to corner using a screwdriver to secure opposite corners to tighten those up. You need to make sure these are all nicely tightened but not overly forced so that it has good contact there and cools nicely. Sometimes if you don't do that quite well enough, you might find there's loose contact, it's not making good pressure, and then your CPU ends up getting a bit hot. So just make sure they're tightened until they can't be tightened anymore, but don't force it. Then the cabling for that, you'll see this one cable coming out of the pump. That goes to the AIO header or CPU fan header if you've got that and you'd prefer to use that, but I'd recommend using AIO pump or CPU optional, and then we'll use the CPU fans for the fans as I showed. Then put the display back on, seat that back over the top, and then that has a USB cable that needs to be run to the USB port on your motherboard. So in this instance, you run it up to the top, down the back of the case, and then plug it in back there. So you can see we've got these cables here. We're going to run those through and set those up. So for the fan connections, as I've shown, we're going to set them up and install them on the motherboard as well. So these are the standard fan installations. I'd recommend using the CPU fan header as a reminder for the fans and that AIO pump header for the all-in-one cooler. And that way both things are powered by the motherboard and easily recognized. So you can see on this rear connect motherboard, this BTF motherboard, the AIO pump header is at the back and the CPU fan header is at the front. But you can also use CP optional, CPOPT, just on the right there. We then need the 5 volt RGB header for the fans for the RGB lighting, so the three pin header there, and then you'll be able to control the RGB lighting with Armory Crate. Run the cable from the display down to the back of the motherboard and plug it into the USB header down the bottom there. You can see at the bottom middle of this motherboard, this rear connect motherboard, but usually you'd find it at the front in a similar position, and it looks something like this. You should usually find you've got a couple of these ports down there where you can plug that in. And then that's the basic build. You'll notice I don't have ROG fans throughout the rest of the case, and that's perfectly fine because they're all connected to the 5 volt RGB header, so they're all controllable with the motherboard software, so that's nice. And the display works out of the box. Though you will need the software, which I'll show you a little later on, to adjust the screen on it, because otherwise it will just flash with the ROG logo. So that's the finished product there. I'm also going to review this in the near future, so subscribe if you'd like to see that and find out more about how it performed. 
But what I'm also going to do is to now show you a different build. So I'm going to show you the setup with it side mounted and with different fans instead. This is Leon Lee's Dynamic Evo RGB Lamborghini Edition. And the logic here is I'm installing reverse blade fans on the all-in-one cooler, putting the tubes at the bottom and basically setting it as an intake radiator instead, which I find gives better cooling performance. Obviously, this is with the Z890 motherboard as well. So a slightly different installation, but I thought it'd be worth talking through the process for doing this if you want to do it as an alternative. Now, as I mentioned, these are reverse blade fans. These are the TL wireless fans. I'm using these because I want to make sure the build is uniform. So we've got the same fans throughout the case. Reverse blade fans mean that the air has been pulled in. So it's intake fans set up like this with LCD screens on them. So if you want even more screens in your system, you can do this. The installation of the fans onto the radiator is fairly straightforward though. You just screw in those long radiator screws that are included with the rad in through the fans and into the radiator. Mounting the radiator onto a tray, so in this instance the case has a tray that you can remove and you can mount the rad to it and use the small screws and the washers to do that and secure the radiator to the tray so it ends up looking like this. Now I've put the tubes at the bottom of the radiator because that's people's preference in the most part and it ensures that any air that builds up in the system over time will end up at the top of the radiator and not work its way into the pump. However, it does present some issues in that the tubes on this cooler are a bit short so it ends up being quite tight and does press against the GPU which is something worth bearing in mind if you're thinking about doing a similar setup with your all-in-one cooler. I also found I had to secure this into the case and push it up a little bit on the radiator tray in order to do so, which is also worth noting. But it is gonna vary from case to case depending on which build you're putting it into. Obviously you might not be following exactly what I'm doing. If you've got a different build, you can also side mount into a lot of other cases. But the same logic, so the fans have a power cable that connects up to the CPU fan header. Now, because I've already used this in a build, I've had to wipe off the thermal paste and I'm now using this cryo sheet instead. So this is a good alternative to buying more thermal paste. It's a pad that you can put over the top of the CPU and then you can just seat your cooler down over the top of it. So obviously I've cleaned off the CPU. I've cleaned off the cooler. I'm now seating the pump block over the top with the same sort of logic, screwing it down in the four corners and securing it here. The idea here is that we'll get good cooling still, but we won't have to worry about the thermal paste problems that we'd have had by damaging it, by taking it off one system and putting it into another. But then you can end up with it set up like this and obviously having intake fans cooling your CPU down. I've actually found this is the best position for your all-in-one cooler. Let's have a look at Armoury Crate now and the control of the display. It's worth noting that if you have an Zeus motherboard, you'll have Armoury Crate as well controlling other things including the RGB lighting on the fans. If you have a different motherboard you'll need to use the RGB controls for that but you will need Armoury Crate to control the display. Obviously you can go through various different animations in here but you can also set it up to monitor different things like CPU temperature, GPU temperature, the various different things that you can see listed in here so you've got options to display those things on the screen. So this gives you a nice range of options in here that you can see at a glance. It's fairly straightforward to do. Just as a reminder, you need to make sure you've got your USB connection from the display to your motherboard in order for this to work properly. So if it's not working, that's why. And you do need to make sure you download Armour or Crate. Otherwise, you won't be able to control all of these sorts of things in there. So it is worth watching out for that. You can see that you can upload your own background and you can apply different options in here too and choose the length of it and then you'll end up with a nice looking display inside your system. Now obviously I also have the LCD fans from Lee & Leon here, so you've got multiple displays or GIFs or whatever else, and I've done a separate guide on how to set those up and why those that I'll link to in the description that shows you the different things you can do with those and how to get them into the system and control them as well. But the display on the cooler ends up looking really nice and clean and adds a variety of options in it. Well, the one problem I have found is I can't get it to turn off when the PC's off. Just let me know if you have the same issue or if you find a solution to that. I'm still trying to work out what that is. But you do have a variety of things you can do in here once you've got Armoury Crate installed and set up. I would recommend once it's done that you run a test like OCCT or maybe Cinebench and use Hardware Monitor or Hardware Info 64 to test the thermal performance, make sure everything's running as it should be and it isn't getting too hot. 
is just make sure you've seated the pump down properly and everything's set up nicely in there. Obviously, you might need to adjust your fan speeds if you find it's getting a bit hot or tweak things a little bit. But hopefully this has given you some helpful insights how to install the system and how to wire it and set it up. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and check out the links in the description to related content, which you'll also find useful, including on those Lee and Lee fans, for example. And thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.